So I'm on Tee Public, looking at funny coffee mugs. Ooh, coffee right meow. That's pretty witty. Uh, this is on the first page of Tee Public. If you type in funny coffee, coffee right meow. Let me jump over to Redbubble. Funny t-shirts. Sorry I'm late. I didn't want to come. Hang on. Let me overthink this. This is on the first page of Redbubble. Huh. Let me jump over here to Amazon. I paused my game to be here. Eh, that's pretty witty, I guess. Let me scroll on down to the bottom here. Number seven in all of the men's novelty t-shirts on Amazon. Drool. Can you imagine being the number seventh best-selling t-shirt in a genre on Amazon? Well, sure, you can recognize a funny design. We can all do that. But how do you create a funny design? And how do you create that design from nothing? Well, in this video, I break down a formula that you can use to easily create funny designs and scale them up. So if you have one design, you can create many different shirts from it. Sound like a fun time? I sure hope so. Let's go. Hey there, guys. I hope you're having a great day. I'm excited to talk to you today about this. I love reading the feedback and the comments on the YouTube channel. And one of the pieces of feedback that I kind of took to heart is a couple of people said, you know, we really like when you talk about things and you deep dive on things that other channels don't talk about. And I thought, oh, okay, great. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about funny designs and I'm not, I'm really going to try hard to just not explain like this is funny because, because I mean, everybody finds things funny for different reasons, but I am going to drill down on how to make a funny design because I think we've all been in that situation where we, we know funny when we see it, but then you're looking at a design and you're going, well, how do I make that from scratch? You're just sitting in an empty room, staring at the wall going, how do I start to get the creative juices flowing to start making funny designs. So first and foremost, I just want to talk about why funny designs are worth pursuing. I happen to be a big fan of this. A lot of my sales come from funny designs. I think I'm hilarious. I don't know if my wife agrees, but I mean, you know, I, I do my best, right? So it's one of these things where funny designs are popular. They do sell. And the reason is because they're a little bit cheeky. They're a little bit irreverent. They're a little bit rude. They're things that don't typically sell at the Walmart or the Target. So people can wear them and feel like they're a little bit naughty. So keep that in mind as we go through the examples here. And I've got a bunch of examples to go through. They're also relatively easy to make. Now, I know that may not, may not feel that way at the start here, but once you get the formula down, pretty much anything you see any basic photograph, any basic illustration, you can apply the formula to it and you can make it at least funny enough that it warrants a design. And the other thing I really like is sort of in that relation is it's scalable. So even if you have one, like I, I regularly take one picture and I'll make 20 funny designs out of it because it's just sayings underneath the picture. So I've got lots of POD sites up where I've got the same design and I sell number three, I'll sell a couple and number five, I'll sell a couple, number nine, I'll sell a couple. It's all the same picture. So with that in mind, if you have one picture, you can make different phrases. And if you have one phrase, if something, you know, tickles your brain and you go, oh, that's pretty funny, then you could come up with different pictures. So if something applies to a cat, you can have a whole bunch of different cats. And then somebody who really likes a black cat can take advantage of that funny phrase. And another person who really likes orange tabbies can take advantage of that phrase as well. So, you know, I know it feels like a little bit of a sweatshop textile mill because you come up with one funny design and all of a sudden, you know, 20 come out of it. But that's kind of what you want, right? Because you want to dominate that niche. So I just want to throw in here, like, here's just an example. Okay. So I, I grabbed this off of Amazon at random and it's uh, pride, but it's per ride. It's kind of a play on words, right? And when you see it, if you're a cat person, you look at that and you smile and you go, that's pretty witty, right? It's pride, but it's cats. If you're not a cat person, this does not resonate with you at all. So the reason I mention this is like when you read the comics in the newspaper or when you read comics online, you're not like crying laughing. You're not like screaming from the mountaintops. Oh my goodness, this is the funniest thing I've ever read. You get a slight chuckle and you move on. That's sort of the idea with these funny designs. 
So I don't want you to get paralyzed and think you have to come up with the funniest design of all time where people will have a heart attack if they see your t-shirt because they have a stroke because they're laughing so hard they can't control their bodily functions. That's not really what we're talking about here. It just needs to be kind of witty. That's it. That's what you're shooting for. All right. So just keep that in mind as we go through these. It just needs to be good enough, which I know is kind of like sad, but I mean, we're talking about the business of t-shirts here. You're, you're not going to hit everybody with every design. All right. But somebody somewhere will really like that. Okay. So I'm going to break down what's funny as far as like my, this is my personal strategy that I use. So please don't think that I'm the grand authority on everything that's funny in the universe. I'm just saying, if you're struggling to come up with funny designs, this may be helpful. All right. That's, that's all I'm saying. So please, if somebody somewhere is thinking, well, I don't use that and I'm hilarious. Wonderful. Bless your heart. I'm just saying for myself, this is what I use to sort of quickly and efficiently come up with designs. So the first one that I use is basically you find a design, you find a picture that's kind of cute and then you stick some words on it. And I know that sounds like really like humdrum. You might go, well, yeah, obviously, but it's, I'll, I'll break this down as we go through it. So the first example we've got here, this is a pretty popular design. You'll see this on many different POD websites. And it basically says support your local street cats. Now, if you didn't have the words there, it's just a picture of a raccoon, a possum, and a skunk, which they're cute, I guess, but not necessarily funny. It's the juxtaposition of having the words not match the picture. That's why it's funny. So again, I'm not trying to talk down to anybody. If somebody's sitting there going, of course, I know that's funny. But if you don't, if you're struggling to come up with ideas, that may not be readily apparent, right? You might see funny and laugh. It's because your brain has a disconnect and goes, oh, there's there's these really rabid looking animals, but they're calling them street cats. And there's no mention that it's wrong, right? So it, the joke is it's self-effacing humor. If you put the t-shirt on and you're walking around going, hey, these are street cats. So that's the idea. You get a cute picture and you've got some words that don't match. Okay. So keep that in mind as we keep going. The other one is you put a human phrase next to a picture of an animal. That's just really easy. And so you can pretty much any human phrase, if you stick it next to a cat or a dog or a raccoon or a giraffe or an elephant, it kind of becomes funny, at least funny enough. So if you just had the words silently judging you, that's funny, I guess it's pretty good. But with the cat there, you know, the cat is be acting like a human and you're, you're making the animal appear human and that's funny to people. Same deal here with this similar, we've got a picture of a llama and it rhymes. Rhyming always helps because it somehow tricks the brain into thinking it's funny, even if it's not, but it says this llama doesn't want your drama. And you know, if it just said, you know, this llama wants you to get lost. I mean, that wouldn't necessarily be that funny, but because it rhymes, it, it's witty, it's cute. So that's the idea behind cute with words. That's one strategy that if you see that strategy now, when you look on Redbubble, when you look on TeePublic, you're going to go, oh, I see it now. I see it. That's the formula that these people are using. The second formula that I use is you just write something down that's true and you just put it on a t-shirt. So imagine, okay, two levels of sort of, I use the word intimacy, but I don't want that to appear like creepy or anything. But imagine if we met in real life, okay? We would not really know each other. We'd be strangers, right? So this is why strangers talk about the weather because it's safe. So that's, if you're ever wondering like, why did this complete stranger talk to me about how it's snowing or how it's raining or how it's sunny? It's because it's the one thing that every human being has in common. But imagine if I came up to you at a party and I had that t-shirt on and it says, I'm not, I'm actually not funny. I'm just mean. And people think I'm joking. Well, it's a thought that a lot of people have, but they wouldn't say it out loud. That's why it's funny. So somebody would buy that t-shirt thinking, huh, I don't need to tell people. I can just put the shirt on and people think I'm witty because everybody kind of thinks this, at least sarcastic people generally think this. Okay. There's another example here where it's just text. Please don't talk to me. I just want to meet your dog. So these are kind of like snide, a little bit rude, a little bit cheeky. And people kind of giggle like naughty, you know, I'm in the school and I'm getting, you know, in trouble by the teacher because it's that second level of intimacy. It's what you would say to somebody who's a friend. 
you'd say, man, I really don't like to talk to people. I just want to walk my dog. But you'd never say that to a stranger. So if you ever come up with a phrase that you're thinking, but you would not say it to a stranger, put it on a t-shirt. It's probably pretty funny. Here's the third one. Due to unfortunate circumstances, I am awake. Again, it's not hilarious, but it's something that you would probably think. You'd go, oh, I really don't want to be up right now. And as a result, you wouldn't say that to your boss. You wouldn't say that to your coworker or your, you know, stranger on the street. So that's why it's, you know, kind of funny to put on a t-shirt because it's, it's a little bit intimate where somebody goes, oh, if I'm at the mall and I see you wearing that shirt, it's like a wink, wink. We instantly go to that second level of intimacy down below the surface of what strangers would talk about. So that's the second strategy. The third strategy is called truth again, but instead of truth with words, it's just truth with pictures. So what you do is you find a picture and then you just comment on it truthfully. And so I've got just a couple different examples. And what do I mean by truthfully? So you take a saying, like you take a witty saying, and in this case, the saying is, this is not a drill. And you just go, okay, well, what if I literally meant this is not a drill, not a drill like a fire drill, but a drill like a drill that where you drill wood, like a power drill? Well, you stick a hammer on there. Now, this is where you could scale it up. Put a screwdriver on there. Put a box of tools on there. Put another type of tool on there. Put a bandsaw on there. If you're a carpenter, somebody's going to like one of those designs. So it's a pretty easy win. This one design, you could scale into 20 or 30, especially if you're a carpenter or a plumber or that sort of thing, right? You, know, you could put a plunger, toilet plunger on there if you're a plumber. This is not a drill because it's a plunger. Hilarious if you're a plumber, I guess, right? So again, you're not shooting for the moon here. You're just saying, you know, is it good enough that one person's going to buy it once in a while? Here's another example where somebody, you know, the old phrase, phrase you know, saying this is not a good sign. Um, you know, well, this guy's got a literally, a, like they've just taken it literally, right? And they've just put a bad a sign that says bad on it and said, well, that's not a good sign because it's a bad sign. Like it's a cheesy dad joke, right? But this is what some people really like. If it's, it's not really offensive humor, it's just kind of goofy, right? Again, great. So that's the picture piece of it where they're just telling truth based on a popular saying. So if you're seeing a popular saying in, in the world, if somebody's saying it to you, you can just think of, well, how can I literally make that a sign? Like you treat it literally. Here's another one with no words on it at all. So this is, you know, if anybody you know, spends a bit of time looking at this, it's an inside joke because they're not coming out and saying the word F-bomb. And of course, F-bomb is, you know, when somebody swears, so they say, oh my goodness, he dropped the F-bomb. Well, this guy's dropping three F-bombs. So, you know, so if you've got a friend in your life that swears a lot, you buy him this shirt, and it doesn't just say, I swear all the time. Instead, it's a little bit witty. It's funny in that it's literally F-bombs. So the, the common denominator in all of this is that you've got, you've got literal truth. So that's what I mean when I say, you know, truth. You're, you're taking it and you're making it literal. Okay, and the last strategy I've got here is wordplay, and it's kind of related to literal truth. The idea is that it doesn't necessarily need to be true. It's sort of the opposite. You take something that is just a common phrase that people use, and you just extract it out as a play on words. It's kind of like a pun. So I'll show you a couple examples here on what I mean. So here's the first one. And I've just pulled all these at random. I just kind of searched through T Public and I searched through Redbubble for funny designs. So this is the first one that says pure bread. And, you know, it's a play on words because, of course, bread is a double meaning, meaning breed of horse and also like a loaf of bread. No, I'm not a horse guy, so I don't think this is particularly funny, but, um, you know, I'm not offended by it or anything. I just kind of look at it and go, eh, all right, and it's bread on legs, all right. But if you're a horse person, maybe you'd be like, oh, it's purebred, I get it. Some people really like wordplay, like it just tickles their brain and they just think it's hilarious. So again, hey, teach their own, right? That's cool. Uh, but it's a play on words. The other one here is cr you cracking me up. And, you know, it's a pretty basic design. I mean, if you're like, any, if you have any artistic talent whatsoever, you could probably do, you know, I mean, I don't want to be rude, but I mean, it's not like this is a Michelangelo painting here. I mean, you could probably do a pretty good design and at least have a fighting chance at selling a similar design. Uh, and again, it doesn't need to be the exact phrase, but Kraken is the word that is used for like a sea monster. And of course, cracking is, you know, the play on words there. So you can use that sort of thing if you find these, you know, uh, homonyms like they're basically the same word but you know they mean different things or you know look I'm not an English PhD so please forgive me if I don't have all my um, 
English, you know, phrases all down. But the idea is it's it sounds the same, but it's two different words. You know, you can look it up on the internet, you know, words that sound the same, uh, you know, and then you can just play off of that, right? So you cracking me up is kind of, you know, similar in that in that vein. Here's another one, uh, Eiffel Tower, I fell tower. Hilarious, I guess. Um, but again, you know, this is pretty basic, right? Somebody just took a JPEG of you know, the Eiffel Tower, stuck it sideways, stuck a sad face on it. I do like the little sad face. This comes back to the first little strategy that I had. This is funnier because there's a little sad face there. Somebody's going to look at it and go, oh, cute. If you stick a face on something, for some reason, people think it's cuter, which, hey, it's fine by me. If you buy the shirt, I don't care. So you've got Eiffel and then it's the, you know, the Eiffel Tower. So the idea here is it's a play on words, Eiffel Tower, and it sounds like I fell. So it's it's the juxta it's the similarity between the two phrases that makes it funny to some people. Okay, so just a quick recap here. And then I'm gonna go into an example where we can kind of go through these in real time. So I've got a recap here, just you know, cute. You wanna have a cute picture with some sort of words, some sort of truth either truth in words or truth in pictures, and then some sort of wordplay. And again, there's nothing wrong if you want to watch this video again, take some notes, maybe you know, write these three things down and then go on to Redbubble or TeePublic and see if you can see these things in the design. Sometimes that's helpful, right? But let's go through a real life example here. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go through just a picture and then we'll build off of that. So this is sort of an example. I just came up with this in about five minutes. I thought, I'm just going to pick a picture at random. So here's just a picture of a fox or a wolf or a dog or a dingo, but it's some sort of canine animal. So I think this is a cute picture. So let's use the first strategy, which is cute with words. Let's use that and see if we can build something that's funny enough. Okay. So I'm going to come up with something that is the opposite of what the picture shows. Okay, so he's not he's not looking violent at this point. The little wolf dog creature looks pretty docile and tame. Maybe it's your maybe it's your dog, right? So I'm going to come up with something that's violent and aggressive to have a juxtaposition against this cute dog. So here's just an example. That could go on a t-shirt. So I, I, you know, I, I eat your face to me. That just makes me laugh because he's, he looks so cute. It wouldn't be funny if there was a picture of like Cujo, uh, well, maybe it would, but I mean, that's more scary than funny. It's funny because he looks so cute. Um, you know, so I think that's funny. Another one would just be deadly. You know, you could play off of this and go, okay, deadly cute. So you give this to your girlfriend and you go, there you go. You know, you're a real fox. Ha ha. Here you go. Deadly cute. And, you know, women would like it. Kids might like it if they go, yeah, I'm five years old. I'm deadly cute. You know, that sort of thing. If you want to get a little more risque, a little more adult humor, you know, I just think, you know, this is literal truth, right? I mean, the fox is naked and he bites or she. So, I mean, to me, that makes me laugh for some reason, right? Because it's just literal truth. The fox is naked and the fox bites. And if you wore that shirt, you're now taking on those qualities of that animal as if to say, hey, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I can take off all my clothes and bite, right? I mean, it's kind of a naughty thing to put on a t-shirt, but that's what people want and that's why they, that's why it sells, right? So the second strategy here, using the exact same design, is we can just stick some truth underneath the picture and we can just see if that's funny. So a neat way to look at these funny designs is, is just to remove the picture and just look at the, the text or just look at the, like, just look at the picture. I mean, that's, that's a decent picture to go on a t-shirt, but it's funnier if you put something that is true about a human being. So, you know, would rather be eating um, you know, it's funny because most of us get, you know, hungry at, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And so it's, we can relate to this, right? Uh, here's another one where, you know, there's a phrase, at least it's popular where I live, that says bed hair don't care. Um, another one is COVID hair don't care because we all look like bums because we haven't, you know, showered or shaved in days because we're all working during the pandemic and we don't leave our houses. So another one, you know, so I just thought, well, that would be funny to say forest hair, don't care, because it's a fox or a dog, he's living in the forest. It's like, you know, forest hair, don't care. The idea being, you know, you buy the shirt and you give it to somebody, not that they're gonna literally live in the forest, but the dog is like us in that, hey, he's got troubles too, right? So you can kind of relate, you can kind of make it, you know, relatable. And then the third one is just wordplay, you know, it's coming up with something that's kind of witty, so, uh, so let's just run through just some examples here. So let's take a look at wordplay. 
Okay, so what is this thing? Okay, it's a fox. Okay, so and then I think, well, what else is it? Okay, it's a wolf. Okay, and and look, I'm not a zoology major, so if you've got any PhD people out there going, actually, that's a wolf, then find a picture of a wolf. If this is not a wolf, I'm just using this as an example. Please bear with me. Uh, the third one would be maybe it's a dog. All right, so you find a picture of something like this, and then you come up with wordplay based on those words themselves. Okay, so for example, you'd have you know, the word fox. So you would say, you know, fox sounds like the F word. It's not, but it sounds like it. So you could run anything you'd have where you have the F word, you could say fox. So for fox's sake, instead of for F word's sake, right? So that's, that's funny because people go, oh, I know what you mean, but you didn't say it, right? So that's just an example, right? Because again, he's, he's a fox. Using that same idea, you can scale it up and go, okay, what other F words can I use? Okay, I foxed up. So again, instead of I effed up, I foxed up, you know, that's just an idea that you could throw on there. Because again, he's a fox, all right? Now let's pretend you think of him as more of a wolf. Let's say you have a great wolf picture. Well, what does wolf sound like? Okay, well, wolf, in my mind, I thought, well, it kind of sounds like the word Rolf, which means to throw up, at least where I live. You know, if I'm going to Rolf, it means you're going to throw up. So he, this wolf says, I'm going to Wolf. So if you've got like a party house, a frat house, you know, somebody who really likes wolves or dogs, there you go. I mean, somebody somewhere is going to go, wow, that's amazing, right? So again, this whole process took me like five minutes. I just thought, eh, he looks like a wolf. Sounds like Ralph. Eh, I'm going to roll. I'm going to wolf. So, I mean, you know, you can think about this way more than what I'm doing, right? And, you know, if he's, if he's a dog, if you think he's a dog, then, you know, you find a nice picture of a dog. Now, there's 85,000 different breeds of dogs. So what I'm about to show you, you could expand out to have 800 designs on Redbubble or Public. So, you know, there's a phrase, you know, if somebody's not working hard, he's dogging it or he dogs it. So you could have a picture of a dog saying, warning, he dogs it. Now, somebody wearing that t-shirt, of course, they're talking about themselves. So if you have like a quote unquote lazy member of the family or a friend, or maybe somebody thinks they're lazy, you'd buy that shirt. Ha ha, look at, look at old Harold, you know, he, he dogs it, right? So that's the idea behind, you know, this sort of strategy. Uh, another one is if you think that he's a dog and you're thinking about dog designs, just um, just what would a dog do, right? So I like warning ones where it's, you know, he you know may bark at the moon. So I'm just kind of riffing now at this point. I'm going, well, he's a dog. He may bark at the moon. Uh, you know, like it's a warning, like a warning label. I think warning labels are really funny. Um, not real warning labels, obviously, but on t-shirts, you know, the idea like we're pretending like this is a big problem, but really it's not because dogs or wolves are supposed to bark at the moon. Uh, another one would just be, okay, what else is he? He's a dog. He's a wolf. He's just, he's also just an animal, right? He's an animal. So you could use this with any type of animal design. You could just write party animal underneath it. And, you know, that's just a literal truth of what you're seeing. So party animal stands on its own. The wolf picture stands on its own, but you stick the two together and it kind of becomes witty, funny. People go, oh, okay, party animal. Love it. Especially because, you know, what if you took this design and you had a little party hat? You know, what if you photoshopped a little party hat on them or something, you know, maybe a little lampshade, you know? I mean, it's so goofy that somebody somewhere would buy it going, oh, geez, that's hilarious, right? That's probably my favorite one because I can just imagine a friend of mine wearing that shirt. And of course, the shirt shows the fox or the wolf, but... We all know this, you know, the person, we all know somebody who's like, you'd probably like that shirt. So, I mean, if you've got like sort of a wild and crazy friend, this could make a good gift. Funny t-shirts and funny coffee mugs, funny stickers, they make great gifts because people want to show their recipient that they understand who they are really. So the more rude you can make it, the more weird you can make it. You might be surprised at some, I've made some really off handed comments on designs, not like offensive, but just stuff that only I thought was funny. And all of a sudden I'm selling like five or six of them going, man, somebody out there is just as demented as me and good on them. I mean, hey, you know, bless your heart. Uh, you know, thanks for giving me the $3 commission or whatever it is, right? So something to think about there. Um, so guys, I hope you guys found this helpful. I am going to leave this slide up just right till the end because I just think it's so hilarious. Um, but I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you like what you saw today, of course, 
please do hit that subscribe button. Please do hit that like button. I very, very much appreciate questions, comments, getting interactive with other people on the channel. You know, we're all a big community. Let's support each other. Let's help each other. And thank you for your time. I believe in you. I know you can go forward and create funny designs. They sell and you'll have a ton of fun designing them as well. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Take care.